guys and welcome to a brand new Minecraft PSP update video. In this update video, we're going to be covering the changes made in version 0.3 pre-release 2, which goes ahead and adds in some of the inventory features uh, alongside it actually upgrades the game version to 1.13.2. But before we go ahead and get into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could go down there, hit that subscribe button, and that notification bell to be notified of whenever I upload. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Now of course we have our standard setup here with the PSP, and with uh, our desktop here running Minecraft, now updated to version 1.13.2. Uh, so actually, if we go ahead and start the craft server, we'll go ahead and connect it to my hotspot. Uh, craft server is now running on the latest version of Stardust, which is going ahead and adding in a bunch of new features, uh, specifically for cross-platforming and the ability to basically run on pretty much any system, uh, basically with very little work. Give me a second here. Sometimes it's very finicky and doesn't like to connect to my phone hotspot. All right, here we go. It's connected to my hotspot now, finally. And we can go ahead and, well, first off, we can refresh, of course, to start up, to, uh, give a notification ping to the server. It's not necessary, uh, but it's just one of the things that you can do. Uh, it's gonna take a second here to ping and it'll come back with a response in a few seconds. There we go. Um, it looks a little glitched, but it's working. <laughs> uh, and we are in version 1.13.2, as you can see by the window in the top left corner, or well, the text in the top left corner. And now what I've added is that once we get into the actual world, uh, basically you have a bunch of blocks. I've also made it so that you don't have to wait there and see the world load in, the world will just load in uh, automatically. But now if you look in your inventory, you have a bunch of blocks, which you can move around and do stuff with. Of course, I can put it in the crafting table, but there's no crafting recipe with um, support yet, so it's not going to actually suggest anything to be able to be crafted. Either way, we have all these things in the inventory, and we can actually go ahead and start placing blocks. Uh, this doesn't place necessarily on the server side. Uh, the server side is uh, not yet updating for that, but it's relatively trivial to actually add uh, into the future. Uh, currently, the breaking is actually being handled, but it's not actually spawning uh, entities. Uh, but I do, I am adding support for basically uh, the item registry and the item entities that we would be sending to the client. Uh, basically, you can still continue to go around the world, and now you can build with your favorite block of choice, obviously, which is stone. <laughs> um, this pretty much means that it works with basically any block, and Essentially the way that, uh, the reason that I upgraded to 1.13.2 is because there's a really nice JSON file that I can just probably run through a script or through a very simple C program to make a source file that has basically every single uh, type of block and its properties alongside same thing with items. Uh, this would actually be a really cool uh, sort of feature to have and it would basically mean that upgrading to any version would have basically the blocks with uh, at least a decent amount of their properties, uh, their main states and things like that. Uh, it will not necessarily include all of the features and functionality such as updating, but it is definitely a good step in the right direction. Uh, and I can also add things such as items uh, into the game as well, uh, pretty much through the system. Uh, entities and other sort of registry uh, data is also included here. This makes it a lot easier on 1.13.2 plus in order to do that. The reason I didn't go up to 1.14 or 1.15 is because it requires a little bit of a change to the chunk data. It's not necessarily a big deal, but it's just something that um, I'm not too enthusiastic about doing right now, so I'm going to put off a little bit for the future. Uh, it's pretty much just sending an extra MBT tag with some height map data and separating out stuff between chunks and uh, lighting but that's pretty much all I'm going to have to really care about. So let's go ahead and get talking about Stardust Engine. So Stardust Engine is basically right now in a state where it's basically having a big rework done to its core in order to be able to actually be uh, cross-platform to Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, and pretty much any other platform that you could really decide that you want to have, uh, as well as the PSP, of course. This means that we would have a future version of Raven Client, which would be basically not uh, platform dependent, and it would basically be taking completely from 
basically Stardust Engine itself uh, on any sort of platform, and that means that we can actually go ahead and do stuff like cross-platform graphics. So for example, drawing chunks, drawing stuff to the UI, user interface, and whatnot on the uh, Raven client would be cross-compatible to, to basically any sort of platform that Stardust Engine supports. This is a pretty cool feature, and basically that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, it's on a branch called Reworked Core. Uh, basically, right now I'm in the process of adding graphical and uh, audio support to the actual uh, Stardust Engine uh, core components for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, I'm intending on using SFML for the window and audio system and OpenGL for the graphics system. And that's pretty much all I'm going to basically need uh, in order to actually be working with uh, Stardust Engine on our new platforms. So if you guys have enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another update video.